Welcome to The Long and Short of It, the podcast where two friends share stories that strengthen and truths that transform. These two ladies are guaranteed to give you a good laugh and are also known to shed a few tears. Whether you're a longtime Christian or just curious about God and Christianity, our goal is to encourage, empower, and equip women in the intersection of faith and everyday life. So ready or not, here they come. Please welcome Andrea Waitley and Terry Meyer. All right. Well, good morning, Terry. Isn't it good fun morning. to be here on a beautiful April morning? We're finally starting to have some warm temperatures. And because it's April, I can wear white. Woo-hoo! So I have on I my white and you have on white. We have on our white tennis shoes, our white pants, yeah. because it's finally warming up in Colorado, but we're not crazy. We know it could go bad. Oh, yes. yes. But while it's good, we're going to enjoy it. Uh, I just want to say, Terry, before we get started, that I think it's real important we let people know that are listening to us that these things that we share are not things that we're sharing from a perspective of we've arrived, yeah. but these are the things that you and I have hashed out through the years, mm-hmm. you know, and our friendship of being determined to remind each other of the truth and that yes. you and I are constantly reminding each other, we're not trying, we're trusting, uh, yes. we're resting in who he is, we're looking to Jesus, mm-hmm. uh, we're not a finished work yet, you know, we're nope. always reminding each other of those truths. And and we just want to share those things that God has been working in us. We just want to uh, make sure that we take what he's invested in us and give it to others. But we are by no means a finished product. Absolutely not. In fact, we are a work in progress, a big work in progress, I would guess. Some people would tell And that is the long and short of it, is that that we are a work in progress. Yes, we are. You know what? I think it's just topics that you and I discuss that resonate with us. Yes. And just and as we are just processing them ourselves, that's when we jot ourselves a note that this would be a topic, if it matters to you and I, that perhaps it would matter to others as well. Exactly, exactly. I think of, of Titus 2, where it says, where Paul instructs Titus, and he says, tell the older women to be sober mm-hmm. and to not uh, be given to being drunk and to yes. not slandering. And I I was thinking about that this morning. I thought, well, instead of getting drunk and gossiping, we just want to be filled with the Holy Spirit yes. and sharing what he has taught us. Yes. As he's teaching us, we want to share that with other people. Yes. And so I'm super excited about what we're going to talk about today, because it's something I have watched the Lord really build mm-hmm. into you. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait for you to share it, but it's the difference between hospitality and entertainment. And what mm-hmm. God's word really tells us about what it means to be hospitable. So I'm just going to turn it over to you and you just take off. Well, that's perfect. So before we get started, I'm going to start first with scripture because that's the best place to Amen. start because I have nothing to offer if it isn't coming straight from his word. And I have to tell you, okay, so I I, I tell you this and I have it marked and then all of a sudden I'm not going to find it. <laughs> You'll find <laughs> oh, it. Oh no, I found it. Okay, here. I <laughs> I have a paper you mark and um, you've got it in red and everything. Yes, I yeah. do. It's highlighted and marked, but it's like, <laughs> do not forget to entertain strangers for by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Mm-hmm. And that comes from Hebrews 13 too. And, and what I love about this so much is I can so identify and resonate um, with the struggle and the wrestling and the tension and the tug and the pull between entertaining Mm -hmm. and hospitality. And um, as I have um, matured (laughs) and as I have become more Because we have qualified as the older women. Yes, exactly. Exactly. When you said that with Titus, that's immediately what (laughs) I thought of. It's like, well, at least our purpose is not done yet. Yeah, that's that's right. We're we're not getting around getting drunk and gossiping. Exactly. So when I was young, um, I'll tell you what, the thought of entertaining just was very uncomfortable for me really? and unsettling for me. And because it was so much about the trying, it was so much about mm. my doing. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I missed the mark on that. And really what, 
what God's word reminds us and tells us is that it's not about the host. Mm -hmm. It's about the guest. Uh, And how, you know what I think entertain is entertaining is focusing on us Mm -hmm. and making sure that we've prepared the perfect gourmet meal, which of course, you know, is a challenge for me and making sure (laughs) our home. (laughs) No, it's not going to happen. Which Okay. I have to do a little slight bunny trail, which I know we are guilty of doing that, but because we have talked about cooking in the past and because your son, Josh, but there's, I have to make a stand on something. I have to remind us back in high school, I received the Betty Crocker of the Year Award. So this is just a little <laughs> disclaimer that in spite of but my you could cooking, do it if you wanted to. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, let me tell you why. I have to giggle because it had nothing to do with my cooking skills. Oh. I was a senior who was very obedient and eager to learn. And hence they nominated me as a, my mother about fell out of her chair <laughs> when they announced that at the senior awards banquet that I had been recognized. So I just want you to know, I hold that title you, proudly, that, yeah, although well, I have no should. evidence yeah. of it, but it is a title that, so in spite of my cooking skills, but what I have discovered is that hospitality has so little to do necessarily with food, mm-hmm. but instead an atmosphere and yes. how it makes people feel exactly. as we bring them into our home. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That is so true. I just think about uh, when Frank and I used to host the Rep- Cal yes. Rep Round Pen for years, you know, all the years we were married. And, and of course, that was a ministry that he began over mm-hmm. 30 years ago. And just, we still see uh, such good fruit from yes. it. And uh, But I can remember that His whole thing was he never let one person come through that door that Mm -hmm. they didn't get a hug. Mm -hmm. Every he stood at that door till every one of those young people showed up and every one of those young people Mm -hmm. were welcomed. You know how his arms were so long and he'd take them and just wrap them in his arms. And 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 what happened was what I began to realize was that those young people realized we belong here. Yes. And they matter. And they matter. Yes. 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 They were loved. There was a place. I feel like they felt like a place was prepared for them. Exactly. Yes. And that was our thing. We we had, our motto was we feed their tummies and then we feed their spirits. Um. And but as I got notes from kids after Frank went to be with Jesus, every note, I mean Terry, every note from these young people, first of all, that they took the time to sit down and write a note. Yeah. This was incredible. Which but, is a lost art today. Yes, Can I is. tell you, I would love yeah. to see that come back. I would too. And yeah. just, I've kept every one of them, mm. but every one of them said, I always felt like I belonged there. Wow. And I wow. thought that is the greatest compliment a yes. believer can receive when we're, and that's how we feel when we come into your home. Mm. You have an incredible gift uh, that God has given you of making people feel like they belong here, that they're mm. supposed to be here and that you want them here. Uh, yeah. You know, a, a hostess, someone who's going to entertain yeah. can be so focused on the details of, right. oh, am I using the right, right. dishes? Are, are my, you know, the things I've prepared, how does it look? And, mm-hmm. and you, and I have been in people's homes where they're so nervous about, oh, don't touch that yeah. or be sure you yeah. use this you know, plate for that, that I feel like I can't get out of there quickly enough because, because I don't feel like I belong there. I can't relax. I, it's, uh, it's very uptight. Mm -hmm. And yet I like those places where you can walk in and they say, kick your shoes off, just enjoy being here. Andrea and Terry will be right back after this short break. We just want to take a moment to say thank you. This ministry could not and would not operate without you. If you feel led to partner with us in the work that we're doing, you can donate through PayPal by searching Cross My Heart 2002. You can also find that link in the description below. You can also partner with us for free by becoming a share supporter. When you share our content on social media, it helps us tremendously to reach women everywhere. It's also helpful to like, comment, and tag your friends. Once again, thank you so much for your continued support. Yeah. And talk some more about that, yeah. about why it's not about us and why it's about our guests. Well, you know what? It I, I heard the expression once say, treat your family like company and treat your company like family. Oh. And I think it's making people feel 
at home in this space. Like they yes. are welcome. And I, you know what? I love it because often in scripture, we interchange the word hospitality and welcoming people. And you know what? And right. that genuinely is exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. And I think it's that attitude of a, instead of walking in like, here I am, it's that attitude of there you are. Exactly. You matter. Exactly. You yes. belong. This place has been prepared. And I I know as a young woman, I, I, I wanted to entertain, but I couldn't relax because of the house and the meal and all that. Mm-hmm. And now, you know what is such a gift and blessing? There's so much freedom <laughs> in knowing, okay, cooking isn't my gift. Right. But I know a lot of great snacks out there yes, who bake things. And <laughs> yes, I have to tell you the greatest gift. I have the sweetest mother-in-law in the whole world. Uh-huh. And this year for my birthday, she did something really special for me. She baked for me six different kinds of cookies that I keep in the freezer. And then <laughs> any moment I can bring them out when I have a guest. There that. is so much freedom in oh, that. It's well, just such well, a see, gift and a blessing yeah. because then I'm excited to invite people in. I don't have to prepare the treat, but I want to be able to offer something in exchange. And you know what I have found out, Andrea, people don't come here. I always say if you're coming here to judge or to eat, criticize a meal, people don't come for that. They come for the fellowship and the friendship and the love and the conversation and the tears and all of those things. I love, and I have to go back to you and you know, oh yeah, Christy McClellan um, did a Bible study, Jesus and women. And am I allowed to put commercials, but hands down, this is probably one of my, one of the best women's Bible study, best women's Bible study ever. Exactly. But I want to share with you because it's so interesting to me. um, She does a lot of conversation about the Western world and seeing things through Eastern eyes or the Western. And, and one of the things she says is in Jesus's world, The basic norms of hospitality to be provided by a host were a kiss of welcome, Mm. washing the guest's feet with water, Mm -hmm. olive oil for the guest's hands as a soap, Uh anointing the head of honor guests with special oils. Uh And then the outcast sinners and the poor would sit away from the table behind the guests and then be fed after the meal was served. At no point does it say a gourmet dish. No. I mean, I don't see that. And you know what is so interesting to me? In the Middle Eastern times, and so in Jesus's day, Mm -hmm. both then and now, there were three primary cultural norms that she talks about. Uh Honor, shame, hospitality Hospitality. was huge. People were traveling and you were to open your home. And I say, you know what? If our desire is to honor and glorify the Lord, then we need to do what Jesus would do. And it's just, I think it's such a beautiful illustration about making people feel welcome. And and the other thing, Andrea, let me just add to that. Uh As I began studying this a little more, when we look at the root word of hospitality, Uh it actually is similar to the word hospital and hospice. Hospice. And when we think of that, that is caring not for the people necessarily that think or act like we might, but for those that are hurting, those who are lonely, those who are in a really, really tough life. Those that feel outcast. And it's not even just people who are in poverty or whatever, but people can feel marginalized in their grief. Oh, they can feel marginalized in their relationships. They can feel marginalized, but sometimes maybe even their church. And, And I think that hospitality should be one of the biggest gifts of the church of when yes. someone comes to your uh, place of worship where you gather with other believers, yes. do you notice them? And it's like mm-hmm. you said, instead of going, here I am, or we right. should have that, there you are. I'm mm-hmm. so glad you joined us today. You belong here. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm all the time saying, please do not be part of the Us For No More Club. Right. I mean, holy the, huddle, the, silo saints, exactly. the frozen show. We yeah. don't want we that. Don't want that. Right. We want, we're so glad you're yes. here. We're so glad you came because there is nothing like that sense of belonging. Nothing and and like something that. else that it reminds me of is that the whole Christian life is to give people a taste of what heaven yes. is going to be like. 
And to me, hospitality is the way that yes. we give people a taste of what heaven is going to be like, because I love to think about heaven being there you are and yes. I'm welcoming everyone that comes to heaven is welcomed yes. and the atmosphere of heaven is joy. Yes. And so we create that atmosphere of joy by yes. letting people know you belong here. We want you here. And you know what else to make them know? You're safe here. Yes. You're safe yes. here. Yes. Uh, and Jesus prepared a place for us. Yes. So should we not, when people come to our home, prepare a place exactly, for them? Exactly. Yes. That is exactly what we're mm -hmm. to do. And, and as we get ready to close this one, I want to share a quote that mm -hmm. I uh, that I read or, or heard this guy preach it. And I just thought, wow, that is such a great thought. But he said, our delightful enjoyment of and fellowship with each other is an act of war against the wow. enemy who hates it yes. when we are united together in love. And so not only are we coming together as the body of Christ, delighting in one another, yeah. loving one another, welcoming each other, but we're giving notice to the enemy. You can't touch us. Yes. You have yes. no place in us. We love each other. We're going to stand united mm -hmm. against all your accusations, all your lies, yes. and all your strategies. Yes. That is a beautiful illustration I to come so against that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to close this in prayer that if would that's be okay. Awesome. So, Father, I thank you that you welcomed us yes, into you your heart. And Father, we want what's true of you to be true of us. Yes, we do. So Father, would you show us how to welcome people into our homes, mm -hmm. our hearts, our lives, yes. the same way that you have welcomed us. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.